Hey friend, in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through step-by-step step how to paint a loose floral watercolor composition following the cover art of my first book, Everyday Watercolor. This is the fourth part of a four-part series that we've been doing for the month of January, um, covering color mixing, composition, how to paint loose roses, and now we are finally built up to the final piece, and I'm so excited and happy with how this turned out. So if you're ready to paint, loose floral watercolor, specifically roses, composition, learn about color mixing, all that kind of stuff, then let's dive in. Okay, so now that I have my color palette picked out, I covered this part of the process in a previous video in this series where I was trying to mix up a color palette for a loose watercolor rose um, piece using more muted tones, more fall-ish color palette. So if you need help with color mixing, make sure you go back to that video. We'll link to it in this one. And then we also covered composition because we are gonna be painting in today's video, the cover art for my book, my first book, Everyday Watercolor, but with the fall color palette. And so we mapped out composition and I shared with you my steps in the process of uh, deciding what type of composition. And so I have these thumbnails for reference. Um, for how I'm going to compose my piece. And then in the previous video in the series, I showed you how to paint a loose watercolor rose using the size six round brush in different perspectives and styles. So we are gonna combine all of that stuff and paint the art for my, the cover of my first book in that color palette. So I've got my clean sheet of paper. So I'm working on a larger sheet of paper. This is a size 20 inch by 14 inch, and it's obviously horizontal and not portrait orientation like my book would be. But we're just gonna do this C-curve composition. So I have my reference thumbnails from one of the previous week's videos. I'm just gonna follow that same composition that's in my first book, the art on my first book's cover. But this is gonna be an updated version of this art. This was painted in 2016. I've grown a lot as an artist since then. And so we're gonna apply the steps that I shared in the previous videos in this series to paint these loose style flowers and leaves. And because I'm painting on a larger sheet of paper, I'm also gonna use a larger brush for my larger floral elements like these main flowers. So, and I might have more than three roses on here uh, or less, I'm not sure. We're just gonna start painting. So the first uh, place that I usually start, well, for this particular composition, I'm going to be starting in the top left-hand corner, but I always start with my main two to three big flowers. So I'm gonna use that muted color palette. So a lot of my pinks are gonna have browns in them or some greens in them. Again, if you need the color mixing tips, make sure you check out the first video in the series to grab those, um, but I have Rose Lake with some green gold, some sap green mixed in there, and some burnt umber and a little bit of orange to get this kind of burnt rosy feel. And I'm gonna start with a really big, fluffy, uh, loose rose. I'm gonna use a vertical hold on my size 16 round brush, and I'm just gonna start with outlining the main circular shape of this open rose. So I have just a couple quick dashes that are outlining the shape of that open rose. And so the center of this flower is actually gonna be negative space um, because it's a loose style watercolor. We don't need to be as precise and detailed with all of our flowers. We're just kind of creating the essence of, of the flower or whatever subject we're painting. That's what helps to create that whimsical feel. And so I'm gonna start adding in a couple of these kind of more squished in petal shapes to get it a little bit more fluffy and just going around and um, accentuating that circle shape. And then I'll lighten my color a little bit, get rid of the ex excess color or water and start to fluff up the edge of the circle with a lighter color. Fluffing it up. And then once that is done, we fluff it up even more with mostly just water and a little bit of color on the brush and these much fluffier, bigger shapes. So I'm taking the side of the brush and I'm just going up and down and back and down and up. Up, down, up, down. And I'm always pointing in line with that overall shape of my flower, which for this 
perspective is going to be a circle shape. So maybe we have a petal that's falling down towards me right here. And then at this stage, I like to go in with my dark color and while everything is still wet, just kind of accentuate and create some more wet and wet action. Like that. Maybe a little bit more pink in some of these areas. And you can keep going in the center and make it a really tightly wound looking rose. Um, or just leave it open like that, which I also love. I'm going to fluff this one up a little bit more. And I like to paint in these little thin strokes as like little tears on petals. So then from here, I've got my main flower here. I'm going to paint another one probably right in here. Um, but before I do that, I like to use wet and wet technique with my leaves next to my roses. So I'm just gonna grab a couple. I'm not gonna paint in too many leaves right now because I don't wanna overwhelm it with leaves and then have no space to paint my next flowers. So I'm just gonna put a little, couple little leaves here and there. And then next, we'll put in a couple smaller roses. So this is gonna be our hero, our all-star rose. I just wanna darken some more of these petals a little bit more. Dragon's Blood, this color from my Mary is also a really great fall color red, reddish brown. Just helps to bring some of that, those smaller petals forward in the center. And then we've got our next flower we'll put kind of up in here. I'll have a similar vibe, but smaller, and we're gonna be pointing this way instead of up that way. So I'm gonna kind of be working upside down, but just basically creating a circle with all these little dashes and then getting lighter in transparency and a little bit fatter in my strokes. And then I'll get fatter. I also want to accentuate, make this little bit of a bleed down in here. Maybe this is falling off the page up here. And a little petal back in there, but I don't wanna blend these together too much because then it won't look like a separate flower. So I'm gonna go in with dragon's blood and a little bit of pink and red and really accentuate the center on this flower so that we see that it's a separate flower. Just going in with the thinnest stroke in my round brush to paint in these really quick dashes. That white space is really important for showing that it's a separate petal or layer of petals. So we're, we're following that C curve, so I'll put in my next flower down here, but before I do that, I'm just gonna frame that flower I just painted with a few leaves before I move on. I like to just use the shape of the brush sometimes as the, the shape that I'm creating for my leaves. Just keep it really simple. Maybe start to pull out a little bit of a stem to show that C curve a little bit more. but don't stretch it out too far because then you won't have space to put more flowers if you need to fill in space a little bit more with fluffy stuff. I 
Okay, so I've hinted at the dragon's blood in the centers of these flowers. So I'm gonna use, for my third flower, I'm gonna use mostly dragon's blood because it's just such a good color and it's gonna tie in that color, weave it down in here. So let's do a more of a bud shape flower that's pointing down here to help flow into that C curve shape. So I'll just kind of start with my overall oval shape and maybe grab water and fluff it up. Here and there. And we have petals falling away from these bits too. More dragon's blood. Painting upside down can be tricky for some, so definitely rotate your paper if it's too weird to be painting upside down like this, but sometimes I prefer it. Okay, so now that I have my main flowers, I need to start incorporating more stems and leaves to elongate the shape of the C-curve and then a variety of greens so that we're not just flat and boring with our greens. So I'm gonna mix up this brownish green that I have with a touch of cupric green. Cupric green has a lot of blue in it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of a richer green and I'm gonna add black as well. So I really like these dark, rich greens next to my roses. And I'll just start following that C curve with a vertical hold on my size 16 round brush and just start painting in these quick little stem bits going in different directions. They're not all falling in the same place, making them shorter up in here so that the main curve is that C curve shape. And then I'll go in and basically just start plopping my brush down. With, with these leaf shapes. Make sure you mix up the values and the hues. These are just long, thin strokes with my round brush. Some short, some long. Some where I'm using the side of the brush and just plopping it down for that simple, easy shape. Let's get in some more yellowy greens. Just helps to create movement between color. And some blue greens. So adding Prussian blue to my brownish green mix. And then we can grab our size six brush and you can add in little bitty flowers if you want to here and there to keep accentuating that shape of our motif situation. These aren't roses, but just a nice way to keep leading people's eyes through the overall 
C-curve shape that we have. Just painting in these little star-shaped flowers using the tip of my size 6 brush. They can be little cosmos or daisies. sure all my petals are pointing back to the same spot. Or you could do a smoky blue color for this as well. Just a little accent of blue. some stems that point to your little baby flowers. So obviously this is very different looking than what my cover art actually looks like. The flow and composition are the same, but this is an updated version. This is 2023 at the time of recording this, and I painted that cover art in 2016, maybe even 2015. So just giving it a fresh little update. So there you go. Obviously the orientation would cut off here. If we were doing the actual cover art, we would have our title here and the name would go there. Here's the old version. Here's the new version. This one's more of a vibrant color palette. This one's more of a fall vibe color palette. We have a lot more flower stuff going on in this one. This one is just the three little roses with a bunch of different leaves in many different colors and shapes. So a couple different styles, but I hope you had fun. Again, make sure you check out all the different videos in this series if you need help on composition, color mixing. And if you want even further help on everything everyday watercolor, make sure you check out my, my video companion course titled Everyday Watercolor Companion Course. It's under a hundred bucks and it will teach you all of this and so much more. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please like and subscribe to our channel. If you're new here and you just stumbled on the video, we have hundreds of different videos that we've covered where I take you through my best tips and tricks for all things art and watercolor. And if you want even more in-depth exercises, tutorials, step-by-step -step stuff, then check out my books, Everyday Watercolor, Everyday Watercolor Flowers, and Everyday Watercolor Seashores, which comes out in March of 2024. Um, and then my companion course that goes along with all three of my books, even Everyday Watercolor Seashores is out now and it's under hundred bucks. Everyday Watercolor Companion Course is an eight and a half hour long video companion course to the subjects and main techniques and structure of all three of my books. So you'll get tutorials from all three of those books inside of that course. So if you need a video sidekick or companion to what you're reading through inside of my books, I highly recommend it. It's gonna give you all the visual components alongside of my book to help you really grasp and learn those techniques and applications that I cover inside of my books. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching our videos and I will see you in the next video where we're starting our new series on everyday watercolor flowers, the cover art from that book. So I hope you're excited and I will see you in the next video.